Wrap Up. This is Mickey from Call Me Ruby. I pray you're having an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening. Whenever this message so finds you, listen, I want to welcome my new and returning subscribers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so elated to have you. It is my prayer that you're blessed, edified, encouraged, and the Father confirms much via this channel. I'm sitting out on the porch preparing to have coffee time with Jesus, and I just want to just... Take the time to download a message that's been downloading in my spirit for quite some time. I've been traveling the last few days and the Lord has been downloading so many things. But I haven't had the time to really sit down and allow him to speak more to those things. But listen, you all, today is the day. Holy Spirit, I just invite you. I ask that I decrease, that you can increase. I pray that whatever you want your precious children to know on today, to hear on today, and what you desire to confirm will be done in Jesus' name. I thank you for clarity. I thank you, Lord God, for bringing new things, Lord God, as I begin to share what you put on my spirit to share. And I thank you that it will reach those who you want it to reach, Lord God, and that it will bring them joy. It will cause them to be expectant, and it will confirm what you have already been depositing in their spirit for quite some time. And I thank you for it, Lord. Lord God, in Jesus' name. This message really began to take form as I took some concerns to the Father and pondered some things in my spirit. For the last year, it has just been me and the Lord. Many of us, as the Father was working things through and out of us in this past season, in our wilderness, found ourselves in an isolation. And what I mean by that is, some may have been separated from family, some may have lost jobs, been asked to give up homes, been asked to move. Overall, there had been a separation from so many things that we have formerly been accustomed to. Things as you knew them began to change and shift, and it was strategic and intentional on part of the Father. I shared before in past videos, but I share again for those of you who did not see those videos. I myself have been in isolation for a year. It wasn't an isolation that I myself chose to go into. We are not called to go in isolation because of, you know, selfish reasons, because of fleshly reasons, or just things where we just like, I'm over it all. But there are times when the Father will cause us remnant to go into an isolation to prepare us for what's ahead. He did so with Jesus. There were accounts in the Bible in which Jesus separated himself to pray alone on the mountain. And he also went through his wilderness season in which he would pray, in which he was tested, and all the things that we ourselves go through. And it was a time of empowerment. It was a time that he used to learn how to serve people better, how to love people better, how to allow the Father to deposit what was needed during this time. Prayer was so essential to him. And he desired that one-on-one -on -one time with the Father. Matthew 14, 23 states, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Mark 135 states, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Matthew 26, 36 states, Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And in Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11, Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit, and he fasted, and he prayed, and he was tested by the enemy. And as we all know, he came out victorious. And after that time, angels came and attended to him. And as we know, which is so symbolic, and more confirmation for what is indeed happening in our lives now, after the angels came and attended him, Jesus began to preach. He began to do what the Father had sent him there to do. He preached, he performed miracles, he gathered the disciples. Just so many powerful and awesome things happened after he had moved out of that wilderness season. And that is indeed what is happening for so many of us. So as can be seen, there are indeed appointed times set by the Father in which He calls us into this place of seemingly isolation where we are to pray, allow Him to do what He needs to do, to be in power for what is to come. And that is to come is now. It has come and we are in this new promised land. The time is here in which the Father is launching us out as arrows and He's saying, go forth and do that which I have prepared you for. And a huge part of that is connecting with our kingdom spouse because like I have said several times before, for, that is going to bring so much it's going to usher in so much as it pertains to what he has called us to do in this new place Ecclesiastes 3 5 states there's a time to cast away stones 
and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. This scripture is just further confirmation that God has a plan for things to come together again after they've been separated, after the isolation, after things have been scattered. It's always His plan and always His will for things to come together again. Now mind you, this does not pertain to everything. As we enter new seasons, there are often times when the Father will call certain things, certain stones so to speak, to be separated from us, to be cast away. And it's intentional on the part of the Father because it's not meant to follow us into this new season. It's not purposeful and it may not even be a bad thing like I shared in the last video entitled glad tidings there may be things that are just not necessary for this season they've served their purpose in our lives whether it be people jobs circumstances whatever it is this is indeed the father saying i'm ushering in this new and with that comes the flushing out the flowing out of certain things that are not useful or not meant to be a part of this season but for so many of us he's saying he's causing the stones to come together and stones can be a good thing and for some it can be a negative thing in our wilderness season you know just like a farmer the father was casting away stones that were in the way of our growth in the way of us blossoming and flourishing the way he desires in this new season in this new place and he cast those stones away in order that our ground be level and ready for that which he is causing to sprout up to spring forth now in biblical times the piling up of stones heaping stones were often used as a memorial a monument confirmation of something coming together and that can be relationships you know it can be a reminder of covenants etc in Genesis 31, 45 through 49, we see that Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar and instructed his family to also add stones to this monument. So they took stones and piled them up in a heap and they ate there beside that heap. These stones became a memorial and the first two names given to it in Aramaic and also Hebrew respectfully mean witness heap and watchtower witness heap and watchtower and this heap of stones was to act as a reminder of a family relationship and that God's watchful eye was over them. We see this again as Joshua took the people and helped them to cross over the Jordan. Here the Lord instructed Joshua to take 12 men and have them gather 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan right where the priest stood and to carry them over across the Jordan and to put them down where they slept that night. He told them in the future when your children ask what these stones mean, you tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant with the Lord. These stones were to be a memorial for the people of Israel forever. Again, this was a reminder of the covenant between the Lord and His people and what He had done for His people. So as we can see, piles of stones became a monument or reminders of relationship. And I reiterate, this can be our relationship with our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. It can be relationships with family members, with our ordained spouse. It covers a wide variety of things. But what he's wanting to stress is that he is causing the stones to come together again. This is indeed a season of reconciliation, rebuilding, and recovery. Listen, you all, I hope you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. The word for embrace in the original Hebrew is to grasp or to hold tightly someone or something in your arms, usually with fondness. So as we look at and examine Ecclesiastes 3.5, a huge part of this seems to deal with friendships family interactions, romantic relationships. It can also pertain to sexual relationships for those of us who are entering our kingdom marriages. There is a time to come together, a time to embrace, and with that comes so much power. I also saw that the same verb for embrace is often used in scripture to describe two people greeting one another. Hear that in the spirit two people greeting one another is the father not speaking loudly as it pertains to these unions these stones coming together he is speaking you all he is saying this is the time as you have stepped onto this new land this new territory that i am causing the stones to come together again and again just as he used stones in biblical times to represent covenant to represent a monument 
memorial, the coming together of things. These relationships will be a memorial, will be a monument for others to look upon and see the glory of God. See what he's doing in the spiritual and in the natural as he's causing his remnant to be gathered unto himself. And he's doing the same in these unions he's bringing to be now. So I say all that to kind of give you a little background about what I meant by isolation as I go on to share with you all how the Father calls this to be in my life. And I have to mention the downpour that I'm sure you all hear in the background. I was sitting outside on the porch filming this and it just began to pour and pour and pour. Like I always say, the Father is speaking. Anywho, let me get back to sharing about my season of isolation and how he has ushered me into this new. It all seemed to start back in May of last year. Out of nowhere, I lost the job that I've been working for seven years straight. I was working an at-home job because I homeschooled my children that I had been doing for seven years and it phased out unexpectedly. Then, as I began to acquire other jobs, the oddest things happened to where out of nowhere, those jobs would phase out as well. There was even an incident where I was even in a contract with the individual as I do freelance writing and out of nowhere they just stopped communicating. They stopped sending work and at the suggestion of others I said well, maybe I should seek work outside of home. My children are teenagers now. I can do work outside of home. But listen you all, as I began to seek work outside of my home, would you believe that the car that I had been driving for almost seven years, that's that seven again, suddenly stopped working. And I mean, it stopped working to the point where I could not even drive it. I was like, okay, Father, this is not all coincidence because in my heart, I knew the Father was calling me into this rest, rest from what I had been doing previously, but I fought it. And the more I fought it, the more difficult things became. And it even came to a point that the home I had been living in for seven years, I had to leave. And it was when I moved that I started this channel, Call Me Ruby. And funny enough, I had a previous channel, but upon getting a new phone, I lost access to that channel. I could not retrieve my password or anything. And the father said, start again, start again. And he said, do not take anything from that old channel to this new channel because I am doing a new thing. And you all, as I was obedient, even in a place where I was just going through so much, there was so much pain involved. I did not understand a lot of things. He caused this town to birth and bless many and it was in this time that he began to do so much in me like I said I wasn't even around family much I wasn't working it was just a total different environment for me and listen you all I did not plan to go into all that but what I'm feeling in my spirit is that the Holy Spirit wanted to show us a striking difference in our past season and in this new season and what is ringing loud in my spirit and what brought this message to be is that he wants so many of us to know that listen I have indeed given you clearance you are indeed on that mountaintop and listen with that must come a mindset shift let me repeat that with this new change this new place this transition there must be a mindset shift and what I noticed as I spoke to the father the last few days is that I was expecting this new place to be somewhat like the last place for things to flow the way it did in the last season for God to speak in the way he spoke in the last season for just things to be familiar and the father was saying no I have done a new thing. I have done a new thing. And he wants us to know, regardless of what we see, what we feel, what hasn't happened, what we haven't received tangibly yet, he's saying we must act accordingly. We must act as if we've already received this thing because our foot has indeed touched this mountaintop. We are indeed in our new land, our new territory. We have possessed this thing. And the Father is saying, act 
accordingly. Think as if you have already obtained these things because they are here. They are here and you can expect to see them with your natural eyes for all of your senses to receive this thing in the coming days. It is here. Do not be deceived or distracted by what you do not see or what you do see. And he's saying, do not expect things to look as they did in that old season. Listen, y'all, I had a moment because I was so used to it just being me and God, just being us and all day hearing from him, supping with him, talking with him, communing with him, all this stuff. But for the last few days, weeks even, things have shifted, especially since we felt that shift a few days ago. Things have become way more busy because i was just so used to things being somewhat slow quiet predictable even when he ushered me into this new place when he shifted me it was like what i'm getting the visual of right now is like someone dipping their toe in the water trying to see how cold it is or to ease their way into the water some of us have been easing our way into the water, easing our way into this new place, so to speak. Some are not even aware that they are there because they're looking at what they do not see or they're expecting it to look a certain way. But the Father is saying, you are there. Embrace this place. Listen, for me, what kind of got me all in my head is because right in that moment that I felt that shift, things really did change drastically things got busy god brought people into my life for me to minister to and also i'm spending some well needed time with my teenagers i'm depositing things the father wants me to deposit i'm seeing so much beauty in this process and listen you all you know with that comes so much responsibility so when i say things got busy busy please believe me and while these things brought great fulfillment, it felt great to be ushered into ministry and spending time with my babies and just flowing with the Father. I couldn't help but have moments of, Lord, I miss spending all day with you. Is this okay? Because I was just so used to spending all day in his presence. You know, things flowing the way it flowed, hearing him the way I heard him in the last season. And he was saying, listen, you are in this new land. Things are going to flow according to how they're supposed to flow in this land. I have been preparing you for things to be as they are now. Embrace this business. Embrace hitting the ground running because it's where I want you. And to so many, the Father is saying, it's time to get off of the boat. It's time to get off of your ark. And the ark can represent a place of protection preservation refining purging so much was happening while we were in this ark set apart and allowing the father to do so many things but he's saying listen that season is complete step off of the boat and what's so beautiful about this the father took me back to a message he gave me on january the 27th and it was him speaking to my spirit that it was time to get off of the boat and I will read that to you all as I go back in and edit this video but I wanted to just throw that out there now that he gave me a message back in January that it was time to get off of the boat if we do not step off of the ark off of this boat we will not be able to fulfill the things that he has indeed been preparing us for through our past season in this new place I desire that you embrace all that comes with that. Your new assignments, these divine relationships, your kingdom spouse, your purpose, so many other things, new mantles, you all. There are so many things that he's saying that he wants us to embrace in this new place. And you all, as I'm speaking, there is this amazing breeze. I am in a location where there is a heat warning the temperature has been in the hundreds and I have not felt a breeze like this in days. And the father is saying, embrace this new place. Embrace this place where, you know, where all things have become new. Again, the waters have receded. It is time to step out of the boat. Yesterday, upon waking, the father dropped the word re-establish in my spirit. Re-establish. And the definition of what it means to reestablish is as follows. To establish again, to renew, 
Another definition stated, to re-establish something or someone again. To get something up again. To bring back. Are you hearing what the Holy Spirit is saying? Let's read some more. To start having a relationship with or communicating with another person, country, company, or organization after a previous relationship or communication has ended. So are you hearing what the Father is wanting us to know? He is saying in this new place, in this promised land, in this place where he has transitioned so many of us, he's saying there is re-establishing taking place. Another word I heard was rebuilding. He's causing us to rebuild things. And for some of us, that pertains to our kingdom spouse. Some of us have been in relationship with these individuals, whether it be a friendship, whether it be through work, through church, whatever it was, you were in relationship with this person. Some were even romantically involved, but there was a divine separation. And the father is saying, he is indeed reestablishing things. He is causing you to rebuild in this season. And this can also pertain to other things. It's not just a kingdom spouse. It can pertain to your purpose, assignments, and so forth. And that causes me to once again think about the story of Noah and his family. Did he not tell them to rebuild, to be fruitful and multiply as they once again hit the ground running? Repopulate is another word I heard. Repopulate. And as I think about that word repopulate, I think about all the people, all the individuals that are going to be impacted as he's ushered us into this place of connecting with our kingdom spouse so we can do the things he's called us to do together. It's going to bring about a reestablishing, a rebuilding, a repopulating of the things he's causing to be in these end times. He's saying, I am making all things new. Isaiah 43 19 states behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert did you all hear the wind chimes as I said behold I will do a new thing it was confirmation the wind blew just right in that moment to confirm that he has indeed did a new thing in our lives. I imagine that when Noah and his family and all the animals came off of the ark, it took quite some adjusting to get used to this new place, to get used to rebuilding again, to get used to just starting over. It took some adjusting. They were on this ark for 150 days. 150 days it became their new normal they've been accustomed to the boat being swayed to and fro by the waters they even had to go through a storm a whole lot of rain it was just a lot that the father had brought them through and of course the father was providing he had made sure that they had everything they needed on the boat and because Noah was obedient because he had relationship with the father because he knew how to hear his voice he was fully prepared for all that was to come and they were preserved and all was well in this boat. What I really want to stress via this part of the message is that listen, we are now on level ground. We are now in our promised land. We are now in that place of stability. That place where we no longer have to think in survival mode or feel like things have to be as they were in that past season. He has made all things new. And I think about the time when the Father gave us that clearance message and those dates, the 8th to the 10th and then that awesome day, the 11th of this month. I think about how that was evidence of the waters receding. The Father had given us clearance and so many other confirmations the Father has been showing us to encourage us and to let us know that we are indeed in this new land. And just as that dove brought back the olive leaf that caused Noah to know, oh, we are down to business. It is about that time. The third time it did not even come back. That is where we are now. You have arrived. One thing the Holy Spirit brought to my attention as I read over the story of Noah is that on the 17th day of the seventh month, the boat rested on a mountain, a mountain by the name of Ararat. Ararat. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'll put the correct spelling up there for you all to see. But it rested upon this mountain on the 17th day of the seventh month and was stood out and screamed out to my spirit is of course the number 17 and 7. 17 can represent complete victory, 
completeness. And seven, the same thing, completeness. As the Father shared in the last message that we are now at our mountaintop, we have now reached the mountaintop, he's saying he has declared complete victory. And what I also thought about as I heard my spirit reestablishing, and I read this story of Noah, I thought about the covenant that he established with Noah for us, for all of his remnant, for his chosen. He's saying, never again will I destroy mankind via a flood and he made a covenant with him and with us and he gave the rainbow as a symbol as a sign of this covenant that he will keep his promise and the father is saying just as he did so with Noah he has done so with us and he has given us so many signs to show that he has indeed kept his covenant with us and he's reestablishing us in this new place and in this new place while things are indeed new there are some things that he just caused them to be reestablished and when i looked up the definition for reestablish in the king james dictionary it took me to the word restore because to reestablish means to restore to bring back that which was lost not only is it springing forth new things but it's also renewing the things that we lost the things that we thought were dead. He's resuscitating things. And I'm thinking about the dry bones in Ezekiel. He's causing these bones to take on skin, to take form, and to look like exactly what he decreed and declared it would be in this time. One definition in particular that I saw under the King James definition of reestablish was to renew or reestablish after an interruption. Let me repeat that, you all. To renew or reestablish after an interruption. It also said peace is restored, that relationship is restored. Another definition that goes along with what I just shared about the dry bones, a definition said to revive or resuscitate, to bring back to life. I mentioned at the start of this message that the Father gave me a word back in January, January 27th to be exact, and it was about us getting off the boat. So I will now read to you all that out of my journal. It's happening. It's happening. The waters have receded. And now it's time to come off the boat, to come off the ark. All has been done. You have learned what needed to be learned. Let's go of what is not needed any longer, what was meant for that journey. Again, he has done what was necessary. He has preserved what needed to be preserved. Step out of the boat into this new place, the newness that I have caused to spring forth. For I, the Lord your God, have caused all things to become new. Your best is yet to come. Greater are your latter days than the former. Listen, you all, I am completely in awe of how he brought this back to my spirit as he began to download this message in my spirit and how it is verbatim what he said back in January and what the Holy Spirit just dropped in my spirit as I said he gave it back to me in January is that according to the American calendar, January is the start of a new year. Hear that in the spirit. This is the start of the new the Father has been decreeing and declaring for so many of us. And as I read that portion from my journal, it just caused me to see how the Father is always ahead of us and preparing us for what is to come. And as I read that journal entry from back in January, a word stood out to me so strong in my spirit. And that word was preserved. Preserved. Preservation according to the King James definition states, the act of preserving or keeping safe, the act of keeping from injury, damage, or decay, the preservation of life or health. We see in Job 7.20, the father being referred to as the preserver of man. Has he not preserved us during this time? Has he not preserved us and our spouses for such a time as this? Now is the time he's launching us out to do all that he's required us to do in this season. And you all, I am just tickled pink right now as I talk to you all about preserved and how God has preserved us in these unions. I think about how just a couple of months ago, there is a word the Father brought before me 
as it pertains to my kingdom spouse and I was questioning him about what does this mean what does this have to do with us and it was in this moment as I shared with y'all this message that he brought that back to me preserved he has preserved these unions for such a time as this it has indeed been as if we were in that ark being swayed to and fro moving along with the waves the waters the winds the storm whatever it was in this place of preparation and the father is now launching us out as I keep being told to say, launching us out into all that he has for us in this new place. We have been declared safe. And the Holy Spirit just has a lot to say. As I spoke about the winds that may have been moving and causing the boat to go to and fro, I think about how in the story of Noah, upon the ark resting on the mountain, he caused a wind to come. Genesis 8.1 states, But God remembered Noah and all the animals and livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. And that wind is what caused the waters to recede. Hear that in the Spirit. He has sent that wind. As I mentioned earlier, I've been hearing winds of change for quite some time. The winds of change have indeed shifted us into this new place. And just as Genesis 8 said, God remembered Noah, God has remembered us. He has remembered us as we have been in our ark. And he's saying, it's time to get off of the boat. Now listen, this place is the perfect place. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for tying this all together. For me to interject a dream that one of my subscribers shared with me. She sent me a dream she had a few days ago but I was traveling like I said so I didn't really have a whole lot of time to just sit with that and I just knew that if the father wanted me to share that dream he would confirm it like he always does in so many ways I knew the dream was from the father when I read it but I wanted to make sure that he wanted me to share it as I do with everything even words that I myself release I make sure that he confirms it so I'll know it's not just for me or for another time but over the last couple of days he has confirmed this dream time and time again not only did i have a dream similar to this dream a few days after but he also began to confirm in many other ways let me read to you all this dream first and then i'll share what the father revealed to me alongside what this dear subscriber shared with me as well and this dream was sent to me by a dear sister by the name of dara Dara, I hope I'm not pronouncing your name wrong. If I am, I apologize. But listen, I have to read you all this dream. So here it goes. I had a dream of being on a boat and getting VIP access with my family to see some kind of attraction. And the attraction was to be able to see all these people that the world thought had died or vanished, but they really hadn't. They weren't gone for good, just hiding and they had all gathered together and were hiding together as part of this special VIP access experience and one individual that appeared as someone on this attraction was my middle school friend Zachary he was covered in gold paint from head to toe and was wearing a black and gold suit and black lipstick and when I saw him and recognized him, he jokingly said, Oh, you spotted me. Dara also mentioned in this email that Zachary means God remember. God remembers or remembered by God. She also shared that a boat symbolizes a spiritual journey, an adventure, possibly heading towards something new or exciting in life. She also stated that in her review of the colors black and gold, it showed that it could mean a blessing from God and mystery. She shared that it could mean something from death coming to life. She goes on to say, God remembers the blessing he promised you. He has not forgotten. And the blessing once shrouded in mystery for a long time, it is going to be revealed. Do you hear those dogs confirming you all? <laughs> they were quiet until I said that. They're saying, yes, yes. <laughs> and you are at a time, a special time of finally getting access to this. You all, I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I'm trying not to get too excited so I can finish this dream she shared, but you all, 
the Father is moving, He's speaking, He's tying all these things together. He is reiterating what He's been speaking to our spirits and He's making sure we get the message through so many avenues. After that part of Dara's dream, she said it went to another part of the dream, another scene. Let me read that. In this dream, I also spotted before me a woman having a C-section. She was being operated on on a table in front of me, but I do not recall seeing the baby bump or even the baby. It's like the woman was being patched up afterwards. We said that in the dream. She went on to say what this could be representing tied into everything else is the birthing of the promise. We are coming into the birthing of this promise. The thing we have been contending for for a long time. That which has been developing is finally about to be birthed. It's finally going to manifest. But like a C-section, the birthing of the promise is going to manifest quicker than you think. And like in the dream, the procedure was done. It was finished. It wasn't just getting started, it was complete. It was finished. And she was getting patched up. The fulfillment of the birthing of the promise is finished. Get off of the boat and gain access to these things. As in this dream, Dara shared, she said that in the dream, we were given VIP access, special privileges to these attractions. And what was given access to were people who we thought were deceased, but in fact they were not, they were just hiding. And as she shared, her middle school friend Zachary said, you spotted me, you found me. And it was because it was the set time for these things to be accessed, to be found. And we thought they were dead because we did not see these things because something happened that caused us to feel as if this thing was dead. It was impossible to bring back to life. It wasn't meant to come back to life or whatever your circumstance was. But the father is saying, no, I have decreed life to these things. And because of that, I am resuscitating. I am reviving these things because it's time to gain access to these things. It's time for these things to be restored, renewed, reestablished. All those things that he spoke to me as I made room for him earlier today. All things have been uncovered. What was shrouded in mystery, as Dara said, has been revealed in this set time and what i also took note of is the fact that she said he was covered in black and gold in the dream his body was covered in gold from head to toe this is representative of this new glorified place the father has us in this new glory that he's ushered us into this new glory that we have acquired as we've gone through our process and allowed the father to refine us we have come out as fine gold and listen when i looked up what gold can mean in a dream i came across a number of things that confirmed that it just means divine it means a blessing from god it's representative of renewal rebirth god's spiritual refining all the things that confirm that listen we are walking in this new glory, this new glorified place, and it is a place in which we shall receive the blessing of God. Job 23.10 states, But he knows the way that I take, and he pays attention to it. When he has tried me, I will come forth as refined gold, pure and luminous. We have come out of our process, out of our past season, refined, pure, luminous and as we know gold is so valuable gold is beautiful and this passage in job also stated it has been luminous and listen that luminous screamed out in my spirit so of course i had to go look up the definition of luminous and you all it is so confirming in regards to where we are let me share with you all what i saw as i looked up the word luminous full of or shedding light bright or shining Especially in the dark. Hear that. Especially in the dark. Another definition stated. Implies emission of steady, suffused, glowing light by reflection or in surrounding darkness. 
Listen, I know you all hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. As we have entered this new place, we are glowing. We are reflecting our Father. We are walking in the things that He's caused us to be in this now. And it is going to bring attention to us. Not to us per se, but the God in us. The way He's causing us to shine, to be luminous. We are literally glowing from the glory of God. And it's causing us to be drawn to us as we've entered some dark, dark times. There are some dark, dark times for so many people. There's judgment. There's a lot of things taking place but we are shining with the glory of God because we've allowed the Father to do what he did in us and he's using us for such a time as this we are reflecting our Father we are emitting his glory and listen y'all the things that are for us in this season that are to indeed bring glory to him are now and another part that stood out to me was when it said full of light we are full Full of light as we have come out of our process. We are full of light. We are shedding light, especially in the darkness. Y'all remember those little gold in the dark stars that were really popular? And I think they still are. That mostly teenagers and kids will put on their walls the stars that would shine at night. I'm seeing that in my spirit. We are as those glow in the dark stars in this darkness, in this place where so much is happening. But we are indeed reflecting our Father. We are glowing. We are shedding His light. And listen, it's going to bless many. We have come out as pure gold. And that is what I hear the Holy Spirit saying as I think about in this dream, this individual who is named Zachary, which means God has remembered. God remembers. He's saying, I remember. I know what I said about you. I remember you when you were in the ark, when the storm was raging. I remembered you and what I said and the promise I made. And you have indeed come out as pure, refined, luminous gold. And what I also took note of is that in this dream, the individual also had on a gold and black suit, a gold and black suit. And that is also, you know, symbolic of this new place we find ourselves in as this mystery. The things that may have been a mystery, the things we did not understand that had not been revealed are now coming to the light as we are in this new place, this new glorified place. Listen, y'all, what I find just so amazing is that as I was sitting on this word, allowing the Father to confirm that he wanted me to share this, an individual walked into the house wearing a black and gold shirt. You all, I cannot make this stuff up. I literally just laughed to myself. They had on a black and gold shirt. And it was a black shirt with gold writing on it. And I just saw that as this light shining through. These blessings shining through. These answers shining through. These solutions. All that is ours in this now shining through and making themselves known. And the Holy Spirit is dropping in my spirit now that that is what he meant when he said, You spotted me. You see me. Before you didn't see me because it was dark. It was like a mystery. It had not been revealed. When things have not been revealed, it's dark. Darkness does not always have to be a negative thing. It just means that you have not come into the light of what is meant to be revealed in that moment. And this, you all, God is just so good. As I'm speaking to y'all, I'm reminded of how just a day or so after I received this dream from Dara, the old song, Black Butterfly, popped in my spirit. And it was the version by Denise Williams. And I'm going to be honest, initially I thought, Black Butterfly, I don't know about that one. But I knew it was something that the Father put in my spirit because, number one, I hadn't heard that song or even thought about that song in years. And, of course, it stood out that it was indeed a Black Butterfly. So because I could not remember the lyrics, I went to Google the lyrics and you all, as always, I was blown away. This song was all about metamorphosis, transition, new birth, renewal, things of that nature. This song was about a black butterfly soaring. It was about promises achieved. It was just about finally achieving that thing which you have sought less in y'all. The Father just wants to continue to confirm that we have transitioned into this new place, our new land, and there has been a metamorphosis. We are as pure gold. So I had to interject this portion a day after I filmed this because, listen, y'all, it has seemed to take forever to get this message out. And I know when that happens, it's because the Father desires to add to it and add to it he has, okay? So listen, a day after I shared with you all that I heard the song, Black butterfly in my spirit. I'm asked to come outside to see something. 
not knowing what it's going to be and you all it was indeed a black butterfly listen the father will go far and beyond to make sure you see what he wants you to see and you receive confirmation i could have easily missed this butterfly but someone not even knowing that the father had dropped that song in my spirit asked me to come see this black butterfly outside and even more beautiful you all is that from a distance, from the angle that I saw this butterfly, it looked like it was indeed a black butterfly. But as I got closer and was able to see a full view of this butterfly, it was then that I saw that it also had blue on the wings of this butterfly. A beautiful turquoise like blue. And the Father, OMG y'all, the Holy Spirit is just wanting us to know that as he has said throughout this message, the things that were once shrouded in mystery, the things we could not understand, we were not able to perceive or able to have tangibly, it is here. From a distance, that black butterfly looked like it was all black. The closer I got to it, hear that in the spirit, the closer I got to it, or rather the closer it got to me, I was able to then see that it had a beautiful blue in its wings. And oh, what a surprise to see that beautiful blue. And listen, the Holy Spirit just wants us to know that this is further confirmation that we have arrived. That these things are here because we're able to see them in their fullness, to see all the beauty that it beholds. Ephesians 1 verses 9 through 10 state, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasures, which he purposed in Christ with regard to the fulfillment of the times to bring all things together in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth. We are in the fulfillment of these things. They are here. And just as he's been saying for quite some time, we're going to be surprised by all that comes with these blessings. They're going to come with more than we expected. So let me show you all this butterfly and a picture that I took after I filmed it. And what dropped in my spirit as I looked at this butterfly is the fact that it was indeed a turquoise blue that was with this black. And the symbolism of turquoise blue in the Bible is representative of tranquility, of the healing power of God, things that are divine in nature, the heavens. It could also represent the new Jerusalem. Now that had me all excited when I saw that. The new Jerusalem and patience as well. But as my son pointed out to me not too long ago, is that there are not a lot of blue things in nature other than the sky and the oceans. That is why it's always such a blessing when we come across something as beautiful as blue jays and, and blue butterflies and flowers. So listen, I am so appreciative that the Father calls this to be in my path today to further confirm that listen, through our process, he has brought about a healing and we are now in a season of tranquility as he shared in the message from glad tidings we are in a season of tranquility of calmness and serenity do you all see how the father ties these things together and as i'm thinking about this blue and what it represents i think about how you know the tassels that the people of israel wore were indeed blue when the woman who was hemorrhaging touched his blue tassel healing virtue left jesus and he felt it and he knew that it had so the father's confirming that we have indeed received the healing that was needed and that what he has implanted in us is to be deposited in those whom we are called to impact. For those of us who are chosen, healing virtue is now upon us. And the Father is decreeing and declaring that we go forth, we go out and deposit this healing virtue to those who are in need. And to love bugs, I'm reminded of something else that happened as it pertains to this metamorphosis the Father has brought us through. It just so happened that the same individual that walked into the home wearing a black and gold t-shirt also said just a day or so later, listen, I visited a church by the name of Metamorphosis and I had an amazing time. You should visit it sometime. All I could do in that moment was to chuckle because the father was just confirming over and over again this dream and the message that he had allowed to be brewing in my spirit for days. I should have responded, oh, I've been all right. I have been to that one already. <laughs> 
I'm brought back to how Indara's dream, Zachary, which means God remembers, God remembered. He had on black lipstick in her dream. At first I was like, hmm? Lord, what's that about? But then he brought to my attention the fact that what is lipstick worn for? Lipstick is usually worn to bring attention to the lips. So what he began to reveal to me was to pay attention to the lips. Pay attention to what was being said. In this dream, Zachary was saying, you spotted me. In other words, these things, the Father's been decreeing and declaring, the things you have known were happening now, he's saying he is making them visible. What I said is what will be. What I said is being fulfilled, is fulfilled, and you're about to tangibly possess. It's a season of discovery. Pay attention to the things he's speaking to you. There's going to be no more mystery to the things that I am saying and doing. You're going to see and experience and have VIP access to so many things that you thought were dead. Dreams that you thought were no longer accessible to you. Things that you dreamed about when you were young that you did not think were actually coming to fruition. Even now, as I'm speaking, I sense that that could also pertain to communication. For those of you who are waiting on communication from your ordained spouse, the one who God has confirmed is your spouse over and over again, and there is yet to be communication, or either the communication that has taken place has not been what you expected or what you know the Father has told you, hold on to your horses okay hold on to your horses because it is about to go down now i know you all have been hearing that for quite some time but listen just as i saw that butterfly more clearly for all it was all the beauty it beheld the closer i got to it see that as what has indeed happened as we have transitioned into this new place you are about to see it all the father has been giving you confirmations dreams visions a little bit here a little bit there whatever was necessary to cause you to keep holding on to what he said but listen you don't have to worry about that anymore because it's about to happen for so many of us who the father has confirmed it's our time you are about to get the communication that you've been seeking and it will no longer be a mystery just as Zachary's lips were black in that dream and then he says you spotted me that is confirmation of a drastic change a metamorphosis a new territory you're about to know exactly what this individual feels or thinks about you and what the father has been depositing as it pertains to you two the mystery is being uncovered they are about to speak the things the father has told you they were going to say to you and just like dara shared through this dream it happened quickly and even as i'm saying this now as i think about her saying that this was a c-session because it's going to happen sooner and quicker than you originally thought and i think about how just the other day i was in the grocery store looking for hazelnut creamer okay hazelnut coffee creamer and to my surprise i saw pumpkin spice creamer okay and if you follow my channel you know that I am a fan of pumpkin spice creamer. And my first thought was, what? This is out already? It's not the season for it yet. It's not quite time for them to release the pumpkin spice. But as I got home and was just so excited about this thing, the father dropped in a message. He said, sooner than you think. The things that you knew were coming, that I had prophesied to you, that you have felt in your spirit was here, they're going to come sooner than you thought. So as I read that dream to you all, he brought that back to me. And even now, when you think about a pumpkin, you think about harvest time. We are in a season of restoration, recovery, harvest, and reestablishing. And he's saying, prepare for the abundance. Prepare for things to come sooner than you thought. Because listen, I did not expect to see that pumpkin spice creamer sitting on that shelf and it didn't even have my hazelnut you all they didn't even have the hazelnut creamer that i'm used to always being in season because god is saying listen i wanted to surprise you with your favorite hear that i wanted to surprise you with your favorite and guess what it was somewhat out of what man says is the season for it but it's my season for it i pray you all are hearing that in the spirit god is saying i don't care what it looks like i don't care what the natural says is to be when i want to surprise you when i want to give you a gift if it's my season for it i will move heaven and earth to ensure that you get this thing praise god 
and you all something else the Holy Spirit just dropped in my spirit which is just so like God because he know I enjoy the story of Cinderella but as I was talking to you all about the pumpkin spice and the harvest season he also put in my spirit the fact that the pumpkin was what was transformed into a carriage to carry Cinderella to the ball hear that in the spirit the pumpkin was transformed into a carriage to carry Cinderella to the ball and where was she going you all oh you all he is ringing this right now as we're speaking I'm gonna stay calm she was going to meet her prince she was going to connect with her prince whom she had met before but he did not recognize her but as you know from the story itself when she connected with him at this ball everything changed it was up from that point on I pray you all are here what the Holy Spirit is saying see that ball as this new place, your new territory, and see that carriage as the Father's confirmation of transitioning you from one season to the next. And the Holy Spirit is acting as the horses that drove this carriage. He is ushering you into this new place. And just like in the Cinderella story, as she walked into that ball, all eyes were on her. All eyes were on them as they danced because it was so apparent that they belonged together. The people were literally awestruck as they watched them dance. And as I said in a previous video that the Father has you and your dance spouse in this dance, you're following along to his drumbeat, his steps, what he's told you to do, who you're going to become as you unite. That is what many are going to see as you two unite. You're going to flow in this divine flow and it's going to draw many to him. One last thing that I want to point out from Dara's dream is the fact that she said the second part of this dream, she saw them sewing up the woman, patching up this woman after her C-section. She did not see the baby. She did not see, you know, the baby bump. All she saw was this individual being sewn up. And that's just evidence of what the father keeps wanting us to know. We are there. Everything that needed to be done has been done. He has closed off that last season. See that as what was happening in the stream as this woman was being patched up. They were sealing off, bringing closure to this last season as we embrace the new that awaits us in this new season. So thank you, Sister Dar, for sharing that dream. It was so... FedEx just pulled away. <laughs> FedEx literally just pulled away as I was talking about these promises. Listen the father is something else and what's also so like god is that as i'm talking about these long-awaited dreams some that we thought may have died or not even been for us anymore i'm looking across the street and one of my long time dreams since i was a teenager was to have a log cabin and i hadn't thought about this log cabin in a while but listen y'all i was not playing i had sketched out how i wanted my home to be every detail about it. A few months ago, the father brought it back to my memory, back to my spirit, as I was doing a video that was about the father fulfilling dreams that we thought were lost, even bringing back to our memory dreams that we had long forgotten about. So it's just so amazing that as for confirmation, in regards to what the father is saying, I see this log cabin across the street. And what's even more like God, is that this whole neighborhood is kind of like the same style of house. They all look the same. And then at the end of the street, there's this log cabin that just sticks out because there's no house like it here. And I know my Abba, and I know my Abba loves me. And I know it was all strategic and intentional on his part that as I entered this new place, that he brought me to a place. And this is just a temporary place, a place I'm visiting family. He brought me to a place that at the end of the street, there's this log cabin. And like I said, there's no other house like it in the whole neighborhood. There's this log cabin. As I'm talking about God remembering these promises that he made to us some years back, some we have forgotten. It is all confirmation that, listen, God remembered. He remembered every promise he made to you. And this is a season in which you are going to recover all. He's going to cause you to come into these things that he has indeed promised you. The Holy Spirit has a lot to say. He just brought to my spirit the fact that this log cabin, my dream log cabin, is at the end of the street. Hear that in the spirit. As he has closed out this last season, as he has declared it is finished, he has completed it, we have clearance. 
there at the end of this street is this log cabin and like i mentioned earlier it looks totally different than every house in this neighborhood i wish i could show you all but i am trying to respect people's privacy that is why i could only show you a small portion of the fedex truck as it passed by because it passed by a lot of people's homes and their cars and all that was exposed so that is why i couldn't show you all that but i wish i could show you all how this is literally at the very end of the street there is no other house after that house here what the father is saying you there you're there you're there just as this log cabin stands out amongst all these other houses because of its difference and even more for me because it's the home i always dreamed of the father is saying in this season things are going to stand out because they're going to look so different from your last season these are your promises this is your ordained spouse so expect to receive these amazing good gifts as you've entered this new season things will look different and you all <laughs> one reason why i so enjoy filming and recording these videos outside is because i am one who the father reveals much through nature and just things that most would consider random that happen as i'm talking about these promises and the speed of them and yada 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 Right after the FedEx truck goes down the street, it was mere moments later that a Penske truck came up the street. It was so loud, you probably heard the beeping in the background. So as it went back down the street, I just type in Penske in my phone to see what comes up. And it's a company that is known for auto car racing. Hear that in the spirit, auto car racing. Once again, the father is confirming the speed of these things. First, we have the FedEx, which is known to deliver things quickly. And then we have the Penske truck go down the street. Listen, if you all don't hear what the father is saying, I don't know what to tell you. Be expected. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. So as I shared with you all earlier, the father confirmed me sharing this dream via so many ways. He showed it via the colors that I kept seeing, black and gold. And also, I think it was probably two days after receiving that dream from Dara, I had a vision upon waking of a boat being pulled to shore. I simply saw in my spirit a hand pulling the boat onto the beach or what have you. And I said, okay, Father, you are surely confirming this whole boat thing. So me seeing that vision of a boat being pulled to shore was confirmation of the Father saying we have entered this new place. I also thought about how days before that, I heard my spirit that you were afloat. And then another day, adrift. And that's when I began to put the pieces together. I said, the Father's wanting us to know that, yes, for a while we were adrift. We were afloat on the waters, his divine flow. And we were allowing the Father to just cause us to go and flow and do whatever was necessary to get to this new place. But he's saying, now we're here. So as I saw in the spirit, a hand pulling by a string, this boat onto dock, he's saying he's pulled you in and enjoy his pleasures evermore what the holy spirit just dropped in also was how <laughs> i shared with you all in a previous video my last video in fact how i had received this huge bag of olive garden chocolates you know and that had never happened before if it is in the order of one person they only give you like two or three chocolates the father is wanting us to know and he wants to reiterate that in this new place where he has pulled us to shore we have reached the shore there's an abundance of things waiting for us and it even comes to my spirit that these chocolates were from the olive garden not a coincidence by far now hear this in the spirit i did expect to receive two maybe even three as a one person order but like i showed you all i received a bag full of these chocolates and listen what the holy spirit just dropped in my spirit is that as the dove brought back that olive leaf as evidence of the waters receding when i shared that message on the 11th and spoke about all that was taking place in that time frame listen that was evidence of the waters receding that was evidence of where we are and how he was beckoning us to get off of the boat and now he is saying be aware of where you are I'm going to keep repeating that throughout this message because he really wants you to be aware of where you are and to realize that he has released you to begin to do the things he called you to do in this new place. He showed us the evidence, you all. 
Isn't it just amazing how the Father just ties all these things together? Again, just like in the story of Noah, as the dove did not return that last time it was sent out, that is where we are now. The Father said, I gave you the evidence that the waters were receding. And just as in the story of Noah, right after that, with them arriving on their new land and receiving their instructions, that is where we are. And isn't it amazing how it was an abundance of chocolates, which symbolized richness, symbolizes something that is enjoyable, satisfying, that is loved all across the board, usually a universal treat for many. The Father is saying, Things are in abundance for you, your spouse, and your purpose. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. So listen, overall, I just want to come in here and encourage you all that you have indeed entered this new place. And in this new place is indeed your kingdom spouse. So like I always say, I don't care what it looks like up until this point. I don't care if you had communication, you've had minimal communication, or whatever the situation is. The Father is saying, prepare to see a strikingly different change okay prepare to see a strikingly different change and prepare for it to happen quickly in fact what just dropped in my spirit was a Rebecca story the Lord has been bringing that to my spirit quite often and I've done several messages about Rebecca and Isaac because for a lot of these kingdom marriages that's exactly what he's doing he does not have time to waste he wants these things to happen quickly and suddenly because there are things that are tied to these unions that must take place they must get done and i know for some it seems as if it has been forever because we've been in our waiting period our process our wilderness but listen that was all necessary and some of that was very long for many of us but as we've been ushered into this new place these things are going to take off happen suddenly and once again my silly behind is hearing that song be prepared I'm the Lion King. So listen, y'all, be prepared. And I already know there have been some who have been thinking, could I have possibly missed it? Because I never imagined it would take this long. Why haven't I heard from this person? Why are others hearing this and feeling this and getting this? And I have yet to receive anything, at least anything that I feel should be the case at this point of time. Like I said in the last video, I'm going to say it again. You are going to go from saying, I haven't heard anything. There's nothing happening up until this point. To saying, oh my goodness, I was literally just saying that I had not seen any evidence of what the Father's been speaking to me. I literally was just in my prayer closet, feeling some sort of way, having to take these things to the Father for, you know, to ensure that I was in the right place. And this was indeed my promise, my blessing. And here it is arriving. And like I said before, it's coming with more than you thought. It will be worth the wait. If he keeps giving you confirmations, if he keeps giving you signs, if he won't allow you to let go of this person as much as you've tried, begged to, want to forget this person, if he keeps bringing it to your spirit and confirming it over and over again, just trust the process. Let it do what it do. It's about to happen. We haven't come this far for nothing. It is not in vain. And any day now, you're going to be seeing the reason why it took the weight that it took. These unions are so heavy, they're weighty, they're important to the kingdom, they're important to God, and He gives the best gifts, and He is all about the quality, the presentation. The word He just dropped in my spirit was sustainability, sustainability, and it just means the ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level. Another definition said, the quality of being able to continue over a long period of time the father is wanting to ensure that we had we were prepared to maintain this thing for the long haul like i said in a previous video he had to build our endurance he had to create our pace he had to cause us to be built up with the things that causes these unions to last now we will have what it takes to cause these things to do what it do and be all that the father called them to be as I shared with you all earlier in the video, I am in a location that's 10 hours from where I was. And listen, it feels like a whole new world. Arriving to this location brought many new things my way. I had to go over bridges, you all. I am not one who likes bridges, but I had to go over really, in my opinion, scary bridges, okay? And in hindsight, as I think about that drive, 
mind you i had never drove 10 hours ever the most i have ever driven alone was more than likely four hours or so so it was quite interesting these bridges were somewhat of a surprise along with some other things what i recall is that the first bridge was more of a you no know, a flat bridge and then there was this circular bridge but i do recall that the last bridge which was actually the bridge that ushered me into the state that I was visiting was an upward bridge and i'm also recalling that it was a turquoise blue wow holy spirit listen you all <laughs> he is speaking it was an upward covered bridge at that and the rails around it that was covering this bridge were turquoise blue. And I recall just thinking, OMG, as I approached this bridge because, like I said, I am not a fan. And up until this point, you all, I can honestly admit that I've never been across a bridge like that. Not one that was over water or that was over anything. It was more of just a bridge that was more of a decorative thing. So I had my little moment. But like I said, I knew there was no turning back. I couldn't go back the way I came because it would just take me backwards. Hear that in the spirit. I had to keep going to get to where the destination was. And Holy Spirit, you better go. What he also just dropped in my spirit is that I took the back roads. I kind of split it up. I took back roads and then I would take the highway. But majorly, I took the back road. Hear that in the spirit, the road least traveled. For the majority of the time that I was on the back roads, I kid you not, it seemed as if I was the only car on the road a lot of the time. I may have saw two or three other cars from time to time, but in this deep country, these back roads were so desolate. Hear that in the spirit as what we have just been through, this isolation as we've headed to our destination. But although the roads were somewhat desolate, keep in mind that back roads can bring lots of surprises. Oftentimes there are lots of sharp turns, you have to go up these hills, you never really know what to expect. Does that not sound like the season that we just came out of? Honey, boo child, listen y'all, much took place that we did not expect and there were indeed some sharp turns, some heels. There was just so much, but listen, we have come out with a victory and I just think it's so amazing that the father calls me to go up a bridge that was covered in turquoise railing. And it was a bridge that was upper. It was as if I was going up a hill almost. Hear that in the spirit as well. It was just confirmation that we have been elevated as we have entered this new place and that we have indeed reached our mountaintop. And what I find even more strategic on part of the Father is that this bridge would not have been encountered if I would have traveled the highway to get to this destination. This bridge was the entrance to this state via the back roads. And it even had a sign that said, Welcome to said state as I entered. And what the Holy Spirit is also revealing is that when you take the back roads, it's a much more scenic route. You see much. You see way more than you would see on the highway. And people are not in a rush. People are taking their time enjoying the scenery. And that is exactly what was happening, you all, as I drove through this deep countryside. It was so quiet. It was so beautiful. It was just countryside for miles and miles and miles. And for many of us, as we were in our wilderness place, the Father showed us many things that we would have not saw if we had been in a rush, if we had ignored his promptings to rest and to just bask in what he was trying to do in this past season, we would have missed a lot. But thanks be to God that many of us were obedient and allowed the Father to do what needed to be done in this wilderness. We took the back road, which was indeed a much scenic route. Well, you all hear that wind? I'm telling you, it is confirmation of where we are. As I've heard in my spirit several times over the last few months, winds of change, winds of change this wind is just evidence that we are in our new land and like i was saying there was so much open space so much country so much cornfields just the sound of the incense it was just nothing but serenity tranquility and just quiet as i drove through the countryside and the father is saying listen as you have entered this new place this new land this territory that he's called you to possess there is so much open land go forth and be fruitful and multiply do the things that i built you up to do build the relationships that i'm bringing into your life now listen y'all it's a beautiful place to be it's a beautiful place to be 
Earlier in this message, I heard the song A Whole New World in my spirit. And it's this song from the Aladdin movie, A Whole New World. I don't want to take more time as this message is already very lengthy. But I did Google the lyrics and listen, you all. The Father is indeed speaking. For those of you who feel led, take some time after this message or even now pause it and just look at the lyrics to the song A Whole New World from the movie Aladdin. Listen, the Father is wanting us to know where we are. And just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you what He wants concerning that song. Listen, y'all, the Father can speak to us in so many ways. So just ask Him to speak to you what He is saying via that song. God has done some interesting things as I've tried to get this message out for the last few days. He just keeps adding and adding. I'm like, Holy Spirit, just do your thing. I'm just flowing with you. But two interesting things happen as it pertains to the television here where I'm staying. I am not one who watches a lot of television. In fact, I can't even tell you when the last time it was that I even watched anything. It's been months, months, you all. But as I was laying in bed the other day, someone had left the television on in the room that I was staying. And there was a moment when the power went off and everything just cut off, completely cut off. And when it came back on, it was on some kind of streaming channel with the song with the theme song good times playing good times you all remember that old show good times and i was like okay i hear you father prepare for some good times you all the father is speaking loudly y'all know i have to sing it when i get too excited then the following day, I was lying in bed, drifting off to sleep. So as I rolled over, I happened to glance at the television, you all, and you would not believe what I saw. There was a show coming on, and the title of this show was From the Deserts to the Grasslands. From the Deserts to the Grasslands. I know you all hear Abby in that one. And even more, you all, as this show began to come on, there was a cheetah running across the screen. So obviously, the Father wants us to know that these things are happening suddenly. Hence the cheetah. From the desert to the grassland is your testimony. It's our testimony. And listen, you all, no matter how much I try to end this message, the Father just keeps bringing it to my spirit more and more and more. Just the other day, my daughter called out to me asking me to set my alarm for a certain time to wake her up. And I noticed right away that it was an odd time that she said. I knew in my spirit that that was the father wanting me to take notice of that because like I said, it was such an odd time. She wanted me to set my alarm for 518. 518? I'm like, 518? And of course, I looked it up and you all, <laughs> the father is repeating himself because he wants us to know the number 518 according to the strong's concordance is to bring tidings from a person or a thing my last message was entitled your season of glad tidings are you already hearing what the father is saying your season of glad tidings and the number 518 meant to bring tidings it also meant to bring word to report to proclaim, to make known openly. Listen, I'm just going to leave that right there. The Father is wanting you to know where you are because we are indeed here. You are in your season of glad tidings. You're about to see these things declared openly in the mighty name of Jesus. But listen, I pray this message bless you. It took quite some time to get out, but I pray that you find much confirmation, much encouragement, and that the Father just continues to cause you to be joyful and expectant as it pertains to what He has indeed done in your life. You are there. Embrace this new place, you all. I am so excited for all of us. Listen, take this back to the Father and ask Him to speak more into it. I know there's much He wants to say. There was so much meat in this word that I know that's going to reach many. Lord, I just pray, as I did early in this message, that it reaches whom it's supposed to reach in Jesus' name. Thank you for all of you who have sold into this ministry. May God bless you a thousandfold and then son. May he cause increase in every area of your lives. And listen, I love you all so very much. Please continue to share your testimonies. They are such an encouragement. And listen, any day now, for some of us, we've already began to see these things happen. So until next time, be blessed. Love you guys.